If I were to tell you that running could be making it more difficult for you to lose body fat, would you believe me? In this episode of the Tandem Talk Show, I want to talk about why running could be sabotaging your fat loss efforts and what to do instead. If you're new to our podcast, my name is Coach G, and I'm the founder of Tandem Nutrition, and we specialize in helping women lose body fat in a very healthy and sustainable way, and I'm very, very passionate about spreading the truth about fat loss and making it very easy and simple to help women lose body fat for life. And I'm really excited about this short episode today because with it being summer, more and more people are out there running and burning a lot of calories. And I just want to make sure that people know exactly what to do to not only lose body fat, but lose body fat fast and sustainably. So I'm really excited about this topic because especially it makes sense, right? Running burns more calories. And when we look at running versus walking, we see that, hey, running burns more calories and therefore we should do more of that, right? Well, I, I want to change your perspective on something because I really think this could help you lose more body fat and make it easier to lose body fat as well. As you know, running, you will burn more, you will burn more calories running than you will walking. However, one thing that's very interesting to note about running is that because your heart rate is higher when you're running. That means that your body is using more of carbohydrates or fuel, okay? So throughout exercise, your body will burn a mix of fat and or carbohydrates. And at different heart rate levels, your body can switch to using more of one than the other. But because running increases heart rate, you'll be burning more carbohydrates for fuel and energy. And that's that's not a bad thing. But what it causes could make it more difficult for you to lose body fat. Here's why. Whenever we are burning carbohydrates for energy, your body has to your body has to replenish those carbs. And in order to replenish those carbohydrates in your muscle glycogen stores in your body, it does so by triggering a response to increase hunger and cravings because it does that naturally because it wants you to eat more calories in order to refuel what was lost. And another, another interesting thing is that we also know that higher heart rates can also lead to higher cortisol levels. Now, cortisol, as you probably know, is a stress hormone. And when this is high, especially chronically high, this can also increase cravings. And the reason why this is important is because, as you know, in order to maintain a consistent rate of fat loss every single week, we have to be in a consistent calorie deficit. And whenever we have consistent hunger or cravings, and it is taking us out of a calorie deficit, then we are not losing body fat, right? We're going to stop losing body fat when we're not hitting our calorie goal for fat loss. And we are giving in to our hunger and cravings by eating more food. So yes, you may burn more calories in the short term while you're running. But if it makes you hungrier and have more cravings in a way that you're eating over your calorie goal, then it is not the best long-term solution. And if you're not able to maintain a calorie deficit, you will not lose body fat. So let's look at walking, okay? Walking is what I recommend for fat loss. Now, we also know that to lose body fat, it's really important to maintain a protein-focused calorie deficit. Your diet should drive fat loss, okay? Your diet should drive fat loss. But in order to burn more calories, walking would be a more effective alternative. And here's why. Walking still burns calories, right? You're still burning calories throughout the day. And one thing about walking is that it doesn't cause spikes in hunger or cravings. It does not affect cortisol levels as well. And therefore, when you're not having spikes in cravings or hunger and you're not getting increases in cortisol levels, you're you're better able to maintain a calorie deficit. In fact, by walking 10,000 steps a day, you can you burn anywhere between 400 and 500 calories throughout the day. And that's sometimes double of what you burn throughout a weight training session. Okay. Weight training is still very important, but 
when it comes to losing body fat, we have to focus on number one, diet and simple, ex- simple ways we can be active without increasing hunger. Now, when it comes to weight training, though, weight training is important for other things, such as maintaining muscle mass and keeping a fast metabolism. But keep in mind that even though walking seems simple over time throughout the day, you can burn quite a few calories. So I'm not saying that you should never run. I think we have to look at the reasons why we run, right? If you like to run because running makes you feel good, if it helps you, helps your mood and for mental health, by all means, go for it. I love it. In fact, you know, my team and I were getting ready for a 5k here in September And I'm excited to start training for that. I will not be running to lose body fat. I'll be running to improve my performance on this 5K event. So if you've been running and you have not been seeing the progress you want, I would encourage you to to ask yourself the question, why am I running? If you're running because you want to lose body fat, there there is a more effective and simpler way. In fact, all of our clients here at Tanda Nutrition, what we do is we give them a simple step goal. and If you've never had a step goal before, I can promise you that this this would be a game changer for you. I count my steps every single day. I have a Fitbit and my daily step goal is 10,000 steps a day. And if you currently do not have a step goal and you want a step goal, here are are two things you can do right now to get your step goal. Number one, if you're tracking your steps, okay, there's actually three things. Number one, if you're not currently tracking your steps, I would encourage you to start tracking your steps. You don't have to buy a Fitbit or an Apple Watch. You can get a simple activity tracker off of Amazon for $34 or $39. And I do not recommend using your phone to track calor- to track steps because I tried that years and years ago. And I realized that I was obsessed with having my phone near me because I want to make sure that my steps were, you know, were being counted. And and, and it just caused me to lose focus because I was always on my phone. I couldn't leave my phone anywhere. And I just, I never got an accurate step count. And so I bought a Fitbit and that's probably one of the best investments I've ever had because now I am tracking my daily steps. And once you have an activity tracking device, what to do next is track your steps for three to five days, right? And get an average. So I'd recommend at least one weekend day and two weekdays. And let's say you're daily average is 5,000 steps. If your daily average is 5,000 steps, one great way to set up a goal for you is to increase by 1,000 or 1,500 steps. So that means if your average was 5,000, then add add on to that 1,000 or 1,500, and that'll be your first step goal, okay? It doesn't have to be 10,000 steps a day. It doesn't have to be 7,500. Just like anything, when it comes to hitting your protein goal, even hitting fiber goals, a water goal, start with where you're at, know what your target is and gradually work up to that. Now for steps, there's not really a target. In fact, I, you know, I recommend at least 7,000 steps a day on a, on a daily basis, regardless if your goal is fat loss or not. But when it comes to increasing steps, it's important to know that it especially if your goal is fat loss, to make step increases by, again, that 1,000 or 1,500 at a time based upon your fat loss progress. But again, when it comes to tracking your steps, that is one of the most effective ways that you can burn a lot of calories throughout the day without doing purposeful cardio. And with walking, again, it does increase hunger. It does increase cravings. It's not going to skyrocket your cortisol. You can do it anywhere in the sun with your family. It doesn't cost anything. And it's just, it's, in my opinion, based upon the the science we have right now, one of the best ways to not only improve mental health, but also to lose body fat and burn more calories. So if you found this episode helpful, let me know. Please subscribe to our podcast. In fact, this morning we have just went live on Spotify. So it's called The Tandem Talk Show. And as I mentioned earlier, I do like an episode a month, but if you like, if you found value in this episode, shoot me a message on Instagram or leave a rating and review to let me know, because I would love to do these more often. If you feel like you would get benefit from these, we have over a hundred episodes throughout our podcast and they've been a lot of fun to make. And so I hope you found value in this one. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me or my team. I'm on Instagram at Tandem Nutrition, T-A-N-D-E-M Nutrition, and would love to hear from you, especially 
your biggest takeaway from today's episode. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will talk with you soon.